Hi, I am Chanchal Bose from Mosby Linux. In this episode, I'll demonstrate how to configure storage area network using iSCSI target service in Red Hat Linux 7.1. iSCSI is used for extending storage area network service. A storage area network is a dedicated high-speed network that connects shared pool of storage devices to multiple servers. Storage Area Network or SAN allows each server to access shared storage as if it were directly attached to the server. When a host wants to access a storage device on the SAN, it sends out a block-based access request for the storage device. Traditionally, storage area networks were managed centrally by using expensive, complex and difficult to manage fiber channel cables. The emergence of iSCSI has reduced drastically the cost. iSCSI encapsulates SCSI commands into IP packets for transmission over an Ethernet connection rather than an FC connection. Thanks to iSCSI, instead of learning, building and managing two networks, one an Ethernet local area network for user communication, another for FC sense for storage, an organization can now use its existing knowledge and infrastructure both for LANs and SANs using iSCSI. In iSCSI setup, physical disks, logical volumes or even files are configured as backend storage. In an iSCSI setup, these are known as backstore. A server running target service presents this backstore storage as logical unit numbers, in short, LUNs. Client servers access these LUNs as if they are locally attached hard disks. In my demonstration, I'll be using two virtual machines. One VM1 running target service with hard disks, logical volume and file configured and backstores and it will be presenting it as LAN to second virtual machine VM2 configured as clients. In my presentation, I'll be using Linux operating system as the host operating system. Of course, you can use Windows. In that case, you'll be using either VMware or VirtualBox. Results will be the same. If you like this presentation, you may well click the like button. You can also subscribe to this channel. In that case, you get the information of new uploads in your mailbox. Let's get started with the process of creating virtual machine. From applications, we go to system tools from there, virtual machine manager and here the application has started. Click the new virtual machine icon. From here, create new virtual machine. I am going to select an installation ISO media that's lying on my desktop and next I click forward and then I browse and browse local from there here it is the ISO image lying on my desktop I am selecting it next click forward here you need to assign the amount of RAM make sure that you assign at least 1 GB of RAM else graphic installation will not start Next, I am making it 4 GB because I have RAM to spare. Next, I am going to create a hard disk. Make sure you make it at least 10 GB. You can even get, get away with 10 GB or less, but that's not advisable. Make it 10 GB. Next, everything appears to be all right. You can customize the configuration. I am going to set the Name of this virtual machine as RHL Server 1. Click Finish. From the next menu, here you can change the default configuration. I am com comfortable with this configuration. So I, am, I click Begin Installation. And here the installation has started. At the very first screen, you get the option of selecting your default language. English United States is okay with me. Next, software selection. By default, it selects minimal installation. And don't go for minimal installation. Click server with GUI. 
that ensures that you get a graphic user interface after installation. Now I click done. Next, installation destination that is partitioning. I am going to manually configure the partition. And here I am going for standard partitioning scheme. First, I am going to create a swap partition. I am going to assign 512 MB for this virtual machine. That would be sufficient for the time being. Since this is not a mission critical system and it's not going to use lots of RAM as it is. Next, I am going to create root or slash partition. I am going to assign 6000 MB, which is roughly a bit less than 6 GB. That's okay with this configuration. I am going to make it 6000 MB. Once done, I'll click the add mount point button and then it appears everything is okay so I am going to click the done button next I am going to disable K dump K dump engages some RAM since it's not a mission critical system I don't require K dump as such next network and host name I am going to enable networking and set the host name as server1.example.com okay it's done next i'll start with the installation process during the installation process you get the option of setting the system administrator's password make the password to something that you can remember if you forget the password, you'll have to go through the exercise of recovering the password. So avoid it. Next, I'm also going to create a user named John Doe. I'm also going to assign an easy password, a password that I can remember. I, I don't want to get into the exercise of recovering password and all that. So since I have set a easy password, so I, I'll have to click this done button twice. Okay. Now the installation is taking place. Installation will be over in in a few minutes time and I'll boot onto this virtual machine. Here it is. First thing I'm going to set the IP address as 192.168.100.100. That would be the, the IP address of this system. Then the hosts file will look something like this. I'll also set the host name. The source host name I'm going to set it as server1 dot example dot com hostname ctl command is used to set the hostname here it is server one dot example dot com now i'm going to reboot this system shut down this system and clone it a new clone system will be named as rhl7 dash storage and i'm also going to allocate a hard disk of 2 gb click clone It's creating the virtual machine that would take a few seconds. Next, I'm going to start this virtual machine. You can configure this virtual machine from this virtual machine details tab. I'm going to add, add a hard disk of 2 GB. That's it. And I'll cl click finish. Next, I have logged into the system. This is the storage system. I set up the IP address as 192.168.100.100 and also I am going to set the ETC hosts file something like this. Same as the other machine that is server 1. This is the IP configuration and this is the ETC hosts file. And I'll also set the host name as server storage.example.com. Next, I'm going to create a partition of 2 GB out of the empty space. You will be able to remember that I have created a hard disk primary partition of 2 GB, 6 GB. Now, with the empty space, I'm going to create a fresh partition and that would be a primary partition. I'll make its size as 2 GB which we are going to create on which we are going to create an logical volume 
I am going through the process of creating the partition. Here it is 2 GB partition. It appears everything is okay. So I am saving it typing W. Once the partitioning is over, we are going to create a logical volume. First thing I need to type the command PV create. The last partition is dev sda3 that we have created and out of this dev sda3 we are going to create a volume group named iSCSI vg create iSCSI slash dev sda slash dev sda3 next i'm also going to create a logical volume name of the logical volume will be lv1 and this logical volume will be created on the freshly created volume group of iSCSI. I am allocating 1 GB disk space. That's okay. Now if you do an LV display, that would show the results. That brings us to the end of first part of our demonstration. In our next part, we will be taking over actual creation of the target CLI configuration. If you have any doubt or question, you can post it in the comment section. If you like this presentation, you can subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.